Cody and I'm from Spokane, Washington. Now, Cody, we just saw a, a testimony of you receiving a freedom deliverance, and we're going to get to it in a minute. But I want, I want you to start, by, start off your testimony uh, and by telling us a little bit of background of where you come from and uh, what happened and go on with your testimony. Uh, well, I grew up in a loving, uh, normal, average family, a uh, Christian family. And uh, they raised me the best that they could. It was a middle class family. Um, went to church regularly, but it was mostly just attendance for me because I had a secret, and that was um, I was a homosexual. I was, in, you know, I had those desires, I had those thoughts, and I knew it was wrong because of what uh, the word taught me when I was in church. But I never, for some reason, took it seriously. Uh, I always thought of it as kind of a game that everybody kind of just—it was all just this fantasy that everybody shared. So I never even. You know, try to take it seriously. And uh, when I reached the age of about 17, uh, I decided that I didn't want to hide it anymore because it was painful to hold it. And uh, I told my family, and my family didn't react the way that I would have hoped then. Um, and it caused me to rebel, and I left, and I found some people who I thought would accept me, and that was the gay community. I jumped into that lifestyle. I started going to gay bars. I uh, went to gay pride parades, I went to drag shows. I was very, very involved in the gay community for quite some time and I did what they did. The things they did were drugs and I did that so that they could accept me. When, when was the turning point? When, you, when did you begin to uh, seek help in, this, in the area of drugs and homosexuality? Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to Teen Challenge by the request of my grandfather. Uh, there I decided to just kind of see what would happen if I just let go and gave it 110 percent just you know really apply the word to my life and a seed was planted then um, there wasn't a real devotion on my part it was mostly just me taking in knowledge the knowledge that I kind of ignored all the way up to that point okay now that uh, fast forward to August of last year uh, what made you come to receive prayer and what happened during, we saw, we saw on the screen what happened, but we want you to describe from your perspective how you felt at the moment as you were receiving prayer. Well, uh, it was a staff member at Teen Challenge that uh, said, maybe there's something bigger going on with you. And there's this place called Hungry Generation and they have a deliverance service and you know, maybe something will happen there. So I came and uh, I didn't really know what to expect. I. Uh, I just prayed and I said, God, I don't know what you have for me here. I don't know if you have anything for me here. Whatever it is, if it's nothing, if it's something, I'm just, I'm ready, I'm ready to receive it. And um, when they prayed over me, uh, immediately I felt like I was taken out of my body. And uh, I could feel my hands and I could feel my stomach and they were tingling, but I could hear myself talking too. And I knew it was me because I, I, I recognized my voice, but it wasn't really me talking. I kept trying to... Uh, push in and get a word in and every once in a while I could I could get a word in but then I would get pulled right back out and my voice just kept going it was a very lethargic dreamlike experience how did you feel afterwards after you received prayer sorry how did you feel after uh, upon receiving prayer uh, I felt euphoric kind of like how when you work out and there's that euphoric euphoric feeling after you work out so you felt good yes I did <laughs> For those of you that don't work out, so you don't know what that means. <laughs> but now, now it's been over, over six months that you received your deliverance. Uh, please share with us, how has your life been different? Uh, what, what changes taking place in your life since then? Well, the enemy still tries to push those thoughts on me. They still show up unannounced. <laughs> but uh, I know who I am now. The desire is gone. I have no desire whatsoever. I mean, it's, yeah. So you say the the different the clear difference for you before is that you had the desire, the drive, the the, the want, uh, but now uh, now it's gone. Even though the thoughts occasionally pop in your in your mind. Yes, exactly. And I credit it all to him. I know that I'm only able to do that because it's his spirit living in me, and I just live off of that. Just come on, let's put our hands together. <clears throat> Now, Cody, um, 
before we let you go, we know that in our society this has become mainstream, this has become accepted, and if you think otherwise, you know, you're called many different names and uh, intolerable and things like that. Uh, but we, the Word of God defines our standard, the Word of God defines who we are in Jesus Christ and who we're meant to be, our original position. But I want you to give an advice to those maybe that are watching, maybe that are here that are struggling with those, that kind of lifestyle, those kind of thoughts. What would you tell them? What would you recommend now that you've been set free in Jesus' name? Well, I know that they all, you know, claim to want to live this happy, carefree life where nobody's bothering them. But I know I come from that lifestyle. I know it's miserable. And I don't care who you are. I know it's miserable. I know deep down it bothers you and you know it's wrong. But that's not who you are. I also know that's an identity issue. You place your identity in Jesus and you draw your power from him. That's who you are. That's where you belong. And that's my advice to you.